Everything is Fine is a Webtoon original series where everything is fine. Nothing is happening. End of video. Take care. Okay, now that I've set up a Faraday cage in my closet, let's get into this. Everything is Fine is a Webtoon original series where everything is definitely not fine. While the world might first appear to be fine, everything is very, very slightly off. The world feels like a sitcom, where everything is in its place. Everything is slightly too perfect. The houses, the conversations, oh, and everyone's wearing a giant cat head. The point is that everything seems off. So that, coupled with a charming art style, interesting mysteries, and some of the funniest conversations I've ever read in a non-comedy webtoon, make this a series that you should definitely read. But this series is best read unspoiled. I'll be honest and say if you haven't read it, stop watching this video and go check it out now. You will not be disappointed. The reason for the heavy spoiler warning is because today we're taking a look at everything and anything. Explaining what we know and theorizing about what we don't. So let's not wait any longer. Let's get into it. There are a couple of scenes early on that show that everything is not as fine as the title would like you to believe. I already mentioned how everything felt slightly off in the cat heads, but there are a few red flags in the very first episode. How Sam Wilkerson, our male lead, was already awake and sitting up in bed before his alarm even went off. We also see how Maggie Wilkerson, our female lead and main character, was spacing out as the bacon right in front of her was burning. We also get a really weird metaphor for their situation. Hmm, I just, is playing the game really the best way? Like you can play roulette as much as you want, but in the end, who owns the casino? But why would you want a metaphor for your situation when it could be told to us directly not a couple panels later? We need to forget. You know as well as I do. That's enough. See ya! Yeah, all of that was in the first episode. And that's not even including the dead dog that I'm not gonna show on YouTube. What's more, we see cameras in grocery stores, canned everything, stilted conversations with neighbors, said neighbors buying all the tinfoil because they're selfish, being really weird about their dinner parties, really strange glowing eyes and uncomfortable conversations, and a really weird conversation with a homeless man and their old dog that I definitely don't want to get into on YouTube. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this series, but there's a big question. That question being, why? Why is the world of everything is fine like this? What happened? What's with the red eyes? Why the giant cat heads? What in the world is going on? I'm glad you were as frustrated as I was. There's something going on in this world. So to understand that, we need to separate people into four groups. Our first group is the red status, which is the actual name of this group, unlike the other three. We get our first taste of this with our homeless man. We know they're human, we see his cat mouth is damaged, and underneath we see a normal mouth, or, or at least a human one. So we know those cat heads are placed on. What's more, he is seemingly disgraced from the community. Our second group are the hesitant. People who are living their lives but are clearly unhappy of their situation. People like our main characters, people who are trying their best to forget. Our third group are the opportunistic making the most of their situation, willing to backstab their neighbors or become police officers and enforce really weird laws and rulings. Which brings us to our last group, them. Now whether they are a government, a cult that took over the world, or a future dystopia where we all wear cat heads, but whoever they are, they're very clearly in control as watch what happens to Charlie for disobeying the police. Actually, don't. Don't watch that. It's a little much. 
But when he goes into red status, he kind of goes insane. But that brings up an interesting question. Why does everyone follow along with this? How can they have neighborhoods of people gathered together willing to play their game, willing to backstab their neighbors, or call the police on them, or live in a really weird sitcom world where everything sounds like a laugh track should be played in the background of it? Something interesting about this entire series happens early in the second episode. Now these episodes are jam-packed with situations and evidence that the world isn't so ideal. And often that evidence is thrown directly in our faces. I already mentioned the forget thing and, and the cat heads, but it's in the quieter moments that things really start to get interesting. Like here, right at the start of episode two, no talking, no situations, nothing to report. Just Maggie. Just Maggie sitting alone at the playground, watching no one. Watching no one but the empty slides, the empty seesaws, and the empty swings. Which raises an interesting question, where are the kids? Throughout all of this series, we haven't seen a single child. There are plenty of couples, heck our main characters are in a relationship, but where are the kids? That's how they got people into this system. How they got their children, I'm unsure. It could be that they were just forcefully taken from them. Or more likely, it could have been a sort of trap where there was a mandatory camp or mandatory type of school that was required by law and after sending their kids in, they refused to give them back. Blackmailing their citizens to follow their laws and rules and, and, and cat heads. Likely forcefully taking the kids that weren't able to make it. And to those who tried to stand up to them, well, they probably weren't standing up anymore. With their future generation taken from them, most people probably fall into despair. However, they can't show that they're in despair. They have to show a bright and cheerful life they have. They just have to, well, forget. Most try to. Most try their best to live their life. Why? I have no idea. With their children taken from them, most, if not all, have no connection to them. As even Officer Tom, with his majestic mustache and absolute power to demote citizens to red status, was unable to see his son. There's a lot to unpack here, but what I want to do is to get into explaining some things we have yet to receive an explanation for. First, the cat heads. Why do they want their citizens to wear cat heads? Well, an interesting thing to note is that often the citizens get one red eye. It's a weird thing, as the red eye only appears when problematic situations arise. When people don't want to play their parts, when they're not following the rules. At first, it might feel like some sort of mind control, or at the very least, a mind gently leading into a different way of thinking control. But I don't believe that to be the case. If they had mind control, why not use it all the time? You can avoid situations that might involve hammers. No, I think it's something else. When a red dot appears, what does that make you think of? Maybe like a camera recorder? I think when that red eye appears, they are recording. It would be too much to record all the time. There would be so much video or audio to go through and therefore they would only record when they have weird situations with people not wanting to play their parts. And that way they could separate people who might be the next red status. But it could also be a way of showing that they're there. That they're always listening. The cat head is a way to store a recording device. Not to mention a device that pings their location every 10 minutes. It's a strange thing that the cat heads are just that. Cat heads. They're masks. However, the masks have some sort of green goo or gel in them. And I think it could be a type of status still. That way, it would be nearly impossible to remove the mask. And I think it's also interesting on what the mask could represent. 
All the cat heads look identical, very clearly representing conformity. With everyone looking exactly the same, everyone is the same in their eyes. What's more, using a cat head might represent some sort of whimsy. The seemingly sitcom situations and conversations that they have, it's supposed to be a whimsy facade to distract or maybe create some docile feelings in their citizens. But that brings up an interesting question, why? Most people, like our friend Sam Wilkerson, are basically just holding out hope for the smallest possibility that maybe, maybe if they play the game, if they hold the act and play along, that their kids are going to be safe and return to them. But will they? There are two reasons why they could have taken their kids. The one I mentioned before, where they're basically holding their children hostage blackmailing their citizens to play along with the crazy world that they created. But what if it wasn't just that? Think about it. What are they going to do with hundreds, thousands, possibly millions of kids? Maybe their goal wasn't to take their children as blackmail. Maybe their goal was just to take their children. Yes, they can say that they're holding them hostage as an added bonus. But what if they wanted to abduct the future generation? brainwashing them so that the new generation only knew about this world, only accepted catheads in weird sitcom situations, only knew the world of everything is fine, 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 fine. But that's all for today. So like always, thank you for watching, and I hope I'll see you next week. Take care.